Hello guys, it's Johnny time and welcome to another smart contract hacking tutorial. Today we're going to solve the third challenge in Ethernaut, which is called coin flip. Now the cool thing is that we're going to solve this challenge using the Foundry framework, which means that you're going to get two birds in one shot. You're going to master smart contract hacking and you're going to master Foundry framework at the same time. Now, if you didn't watch my previous videos of how to set up your Foundry repository and environment, make sure to check out my playlist and watch the first video, how to start with Ethernet, and obviously subscribe to the channel for more amazing smart contract hacking content and tutorials. Now, without further ado, let's get started with Conflip. So this is the coin flip challenge and as you can see here, this is a coin flipping game where you need to build up your winning strike by guessing the outcome of a coin flip. To complete this level, you will need to use your psychic abilities or your hacking skills to guess the correct outcome 10 times in a row. And here we have some help and this is the smart contract that we need to hack. And the first thing I like to do is to copy the source code of the smart contract to my local Foundry environment. So I'm gonna mark all the code, copy it, create a new file in the source folder, and I will call it coin flip sol, and I will paste all the smart contract. Now that we have the contract in our local environment, then uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is write the objectives. So our objectives is actually, we have only one objective, is to win the game 10 times in a row. This is our objective according to the website. And now we want to observe the smart contract and see what do we see here. So we have the CoinFleet smart contract. It's new version of Solidity, quite new, 0.8. And here we have a uint public cons consecutive uh, wins. We have a uint of the last ash and we have a factor, which is a huge number. For some reason, it's not defined as a constant, but well, whatever. Now here in the constructor, consecutive wins is being set to zero. And we have one function called flip over here. So this function receives a Boolean guess, which is either true or false. It's a public and it returns a Boolean. And let's see what it does. The first thing it does is to take a block value. How does it take it? It takes the block number minus one, which means the previous block number. Then it extracts the hash of the previous block and convert it to uint256. It makes sure that the last hash is not does not equal the block value. What is last hash? We set it right after to block value. What does it basically means? It means that we cannot call the flip function two times at the same block. Because if we call it two times at the set block, it means that the last hash will be the current hash and it will revert over here due to this revert statements. So we cannot call the flip function or play the game two times in the same block. We, we need to play once every block. So we cannot win multiple times in one block. We have a new variable called coin flip and we take the block value and we divide it by the factor. Then we have another variable called side. If this value becomes one, okay? So if this block value divided by factor is one, then this Boolean side will get the value true. If it's not one, then it gets the value false. So it's some kind of technique based on factor, a constant value, and the block hash to generate some kind of random number. And eventually with this random number, we get an int. And eventually based on this int, we get a Boolean, true or false. And we need to pass our guess, either if this side is going to be true or false. That's why it's called coin flip, right? We flip a coin. Now, if the side, either true or false, is our guess, which means that we guess the right side, we have 50-50 chance, because it can be either true or false, then we increase the consecutive wins by one, by using the plus plus command, and we return true. If not, then we reset the consecutive wins to zero and return false. So we need somehow either use our psychic abilities or our hacking skills to guess this side, to pass the right Boolean, either true or false, and guess it 10 times in a row. And we also have another constraint which we cannot play 
two times in the same block. Now, this is a very interesting challenge because it deals with randomness. And if you know a bit about smart contract hacking and security, you already know that it's very challenging to achieve randomness on EVM-based blockchain, Ethereum virtual machine blockchains. Now, why it's challenging? Because there is no real random number because of the way of the EVM works and because it's deterministic, okay? Now, I'm not gonna get in depth why it's so challenging to generate random numbers on the blockchain and what are the solutions because it's a bit out of scope and if this is something that you would like to explore further together with many many other subjects i'm definitely recommending you to check out the full smart contract hacking course which covers of course randomness and vulnerabilities together with a lot of other chapters we have 30 chapters advanced chapters with awesome exercises, more than 50 hands-on exercises, just like the, this one with a lot of walkthroughs to make sure that you can master the skill of smart contract hacking. And obviously you're gonna receive also a certificate that will allow you to show showcase your skills to companies and other people and maybe land a job in the Web3 security space and access to the best Web3 security out there. So you can talk with other students and professionals and teachers in the course and ask questions and make connections. This is just other pluses that you get by getting the course. So yeah, if you want to get better at in general in smart contract hacking auditing and security check out the course and check out the link in the description below to get a special limited time discount now in order to solve this particular challenge the best approach would be just to write in our smart contract in our solution file the exact same logic the exact same algorithm so in our solution smart contract we can already calculate this use the same commands the same retrieval commands of block hash the same uh, factor and calculate already the 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 solution right we can calculate the guess and then we can be sure 100 percent that we are right and decide that was generated either if it's true or false we already calculated it and we call the flip function with our guess which we know that is already right because we are on the same block and we have the same factor so it cannot really generate a real random number so let's start by creating our script file and i will call create a new file and i will call it coin flip solution dot s dot sol i'm gonna copy here the previous uh, solution file just so we have a template and change some files over here so instead of fallback we'll import coin flip and we will change here to coin flip solution this will be coin flip coin flip and this will be coin flip instance we can remove this instance address because it's going to be a different address and all this code between the start broadcast and stop broadcast. And if you are not familiar of our structure of how we'll solve exercises, again, watch the first video of how to start with Ethernet where I explain how we're gonna solve the exercises using the script files and what is a VM start broadcast and a VM env unit a private key. And basically we're gonna broadcast the transactions from our foundry repository to the go early blockchain so the next thing i want to do is to generate a new instance for this challenge using the ethernaut website and paste it over here so we can basically wrap the address with the interface with the contract itself not the interface so i will head over to the website and i will click here get new instance which i actually did so i will do reject i will not do it again but this is what you should do you should go to the website get a new instance submit the transaction through MetaMask, and then you will receive an instance. Now to print the instance, I can just open my console log and write instance, or just do also contract.address, which will be the exact same thing. And this is our contract instance level address. I'm gonna copy it and paste it over here. Now I want to explain to you a bit how Foundry script files work. So this contract here, coin flip solution and this run function is actually not going to deploy a new contract, but it's gonna use my uh, configured RPC endpoint and my private key to send transactions. So we want to deploy a new smart contract apart from coin flip solution. So we can make sure that in this smart contract, we generate the exact same random number where the game is going to generate. So we are in the exact same block. We have the exact same hash, the exact same factor. So I'm going to create here a new contract. I will do contract and I will do player. 
And I don't need to inherit from script or because I don't, I'm not going to use VM cheat codes. I cannot use VM cheat codes because it's a contract that's going to be deployed in every single transaction. In every transaction, I will deploy this contract and play the game. So what I'm going to do here, it's not, by the way, it's not gas efficient. I don't care about efficiently. Obviously, you can do it in a more efficient ways, but I just want to solve the challenge. So first thing first, I want to copy this factor uh, uint because we need to know the factor in order to play the game. So just I'm going to add here constant just because we're not going to change this factor. So I'm just going to copy this number and write it as constant. Now, right upon the construction of this player contract, I will define here a constructor. And in the constructor, I'm going to do all the logic and play the game. First of all, I'm going to get the instance of the actual coin flip smart contract. So here I will do coin flip, send here the coin flip instance. So this is the actual coin flip smart contract that will interact game, interact with and call the flip function. Okay. Now we need to copy the exact same functionality that we have over here in the flip game. We want to make sure that we calculate the number in advance. So I will just copy this line of code block value, and this will be exactly just the same. Then the next one will be the coin flip. This We don't care about these lines of code because it's just to uh, prevent us from playing again. We're just interested of how to calculate the side. So this is the next line of code that will calculate the side, basically dividing this block hash by the factor. And then the next one will be this calculation of the side. So if the coin flip you int is one, then it will be true or if not, it will be false. And now that we have all the calculations, we can call our, call our coin flip instance called the function flip, and we can simply just uh, send the calculated side that we already calculated. We did the exact same calculation. We have the exact same factor. We are running on the same block, which means that the hash is going to be the same. The coin flip is gonna be the same, and the side is going to be the same. So we know for sure that our guess will be true. That's why, generating random numbers in Ethereum blockchains is so problematic because we just can create another smart contract that replicates the same algorithm and play the game. Now, in our coin flip solution smart contract, we just need to create and deploy this player contract and pass the coin flip instance. And that's it because all the logic will be executed upon construction. So here I'm going to do new player and I'm going to send here just this coin flip instance. That's it. That's simple as that. And this is supposed to be enough. Now, we want to do something else that will just allow us to be more uh, following what's going on. We're going to print the consecutive uh, wins. Because it's a public variable, we can just print it. So I'm just going to do console.log here. And we will do something like this. Just copy consecutive wins, coin flip instance dot consecutive ints because it's a public variable. We can just use it together and that's how it works. So we will print every time this uh, consecutive wins. Now, the, the sad thing here is that we need to manually run the script 10 times because we need to play this game in 10 different blocks. We cannot play the same game at the same block. As you can see here, we have this kind of restriction with the last hash and revert. So manually, I will have just to run this script 10 times. So I will do forge script and script. Then I will call coin flip solution. And I'm first gonna run it locally with a fork of Gorilla blockchain without actually broadcasting into the blockchain to see how it works and if everything is working. And there is a small nuance that we need to pay attention to because in our script file, we have two smart contracts. Foundry doesn't know which contract to execute when we run the script. And as you can see here, it tells us that we have multiple contracts. So it asks us to supply the TC, which is like the target contract. So we will have to add here dash dash TC and pass the contract name that we want to execute, which is coin flip solution. Beautiful guys. As you can see, the consecutive wins is already nine because I already ran this script <laughs> nine times in advance. Do you think that I would be recording now a video and run with you 10 times? No, you will have to run it 10 times and I already ran it nine times. So we're going to run it one more time. And this time we're going to use the broadcast command to actually broadcast it to the blockchain, to the go early blockchain using our MetaMask EOA account. And to pass the challenge. So this is the money time. We're going to run the command with a broadcast command and let's see if we get to 10 
consecutive wins. Well, we still have here nine consecutive wins because the previous execution is actually being ran locally. So it didn't actually change it on the main on the main blockchain, on the Gorilla blockchain. But if we run it again, then the next time we will just increase it to 11. But you know what? Let's just to try to run it again to see if it's 10 without broadcasting the transaction. So I just removed the broadcast command over here to see if we were able actually to get it to 10. Yeah, we had the error because we are still, as you can see, it's reverted because we are on the same block. So we'll just run it again. The block did not move on in the Gorilla blockchain. So it go. It takes like 20 to 30 seconds to go from one block to another. And we did it. As you can see, the block moved on and now we have 10 consecutive wins. Obviously, we need to run it 10 times and wait a bit so the next block will pass and you will get also 10 wins in a row. And now it's time to submit the instance and see if we can actually pass the challenge. So I'm going to click here, submit instance and confirm that transaction in my MetaMask wallet. And we all going to cross the fingers and we did it, guys. You see, we submitted the transaction. The transaction was mined and well done. You have completed this level. We completed the third level conflip in Ethernet. And if you enjoyed this video, if it helped you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos and tutorials about smart contract hackings and security. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.